Michael Crichton, The Spoon Bending Party. Michael Crichton, born October 23, 1942, died November 4, 2008, was an American author and filmmaker. Crichton received an MD from Harvard Medical School in 1969, but did not practice medicine, choosing to focus on his writing instead. He eventually wrote 26 novels, including Sixties, The Andromeda Strain, The Seventies, The Terminal Man, The Great Train Robbery, Eighties, Congo and Sphere, Nineties, Jurassic Park, Rising Sun, Disclosure, The Lost World, Airframe and Timeline. In 2000s, Prey, State of Fear, and Next. Crichton was also involved in the film and television industry, and several of his novels were adapted into films. Most notably, Jurassic Park. What is perhaps less well known is that he was very interested in the spiritual and practiced meditation throughout much of his life. His autobiography Travels describes his interests and experiences and spoon bending was one. Michael Crichton Travels In the spring of 1985, I was invited to attend a spoon-bending party. An aerospace engineer named Jack Hook had become interested in the phenomenon and from time to time had parties at which people bent spoons. I was given a street address in Southern California and told to bring a half dozen forks and spoons that I didn't care about since they would be bent during the evening. It was a typical suburban Californian house. About a hundred people were there, mostly families with young kids. The atmosphere was festive and a little chaotic, with all the kids running around. Everybody was giggly. We were going to bend spoons. We all threw the silverware we had bought into the centre of the floor, where it made a great metal pile. Jack Hook then dumped a carton containing more silverware onto the floor and told us what to do. He said that in his experience, to bend spoons, we needed to create an atmosphere of excitement and emotional arousal. He encouraged us to be noisy and excited. We were supposed to choose a spoon from the pile and to ask the spoon, will you bend for me? If we didn't think the spoon would respond, we should toss it back in the pile and choose another. But, if we had a positive feeling about our chosen spoon, we were instructed to hold the spoon vertically and shout, BEND! BEND! Once intimidated by being shouted at, the spoon was to be rubbed gently between our fingers and pretty soon it would bend. That's what Jack Hook said. People were looking at him pretty sceptically. The party began, a hundred people selecting spoons and saying, will you bend? And tossing them back into the pile if the feeling wasn't right. Then, all around me, I heard people shouting, bend, bend, at their chosen spoons. 
A lot of people were laughing. It was hard not to feel self-conscious, holding up a spoon and shouting at it. I was sitting on the floor next to Judith and Anne-Marie. They had finished shouting at their spoons and now were rubbing them between their fingers, but nothing was happening. I was also rubbing a spoon, but nothing was happening for me either. I felt foolish. As we rubbed, a gloom descended over the three of us. Rubbing her spoon, Anne-Marie said, I don't think this is going to work. This is just silly. I just don't see how it can work. I looked at her hands. Her spoon was bending. Look, Anne-Marie! Anne-Marie laughed. Her spoon was like rubber. She easily twisted the spoon into knots. Suddenly, due this spoon began to bend too. She was able to bend the bowl in half. All around spoons were bending. My spoon remained stiff and solid. I rubbed it dutifully, but it wasn't even getting warm. I felt annoyed. The hell with it, I thought. I'll bend it with sheer force. I tried. The neck of the spoon would bend, of course, but the bowl itself wouldn't bend. I was hurting my fingers trying. I relaxed. Perhaps it wasn't going to happen for me. Jack Hook said a few people couldn't bend spoons. Maybe I was one of them. Congratulations, Judith said to me. What? Congratulations! I looked down. My spoon had begun to bend. I hadn't even realised. The metal was completely pliable, like soft plastic. It wasn't particularly hot either, just slightly warm. I easily bent the bowl of the spoon in half, using only my fingertips. This didn't require any pressure at all, just guiding with my fingertips. I put the bent spoon aside and tried a fork. After a few moments of rubbing, the fork twisted like a pretzel. It was easy. I bent several more spoons and forks. Then I got bored. I didn't do any more spoon bending. I went and got a coffee and a cookie. I was now far more interested in what kind of cookies they had than anything else. Of course, spoon bending has been the focus of long-standing controversy. Magicians such as James Randi claim that spoon bending isn't a psychic phenomenon at all, just a trick. But I had bent a spoon and I knew it wasn't a trick. I looked around the room and saw little children, eight or nine years old, bending large metal bars. They weren't trying to trick anyone, they were just little kids having a good time. Staying up past their bedtimes on a Friday night, going along with the adults doing this silly bending stuff. The only thing I noticed is that spoon bending seemed to require a focused inattention. You had to try to get it to bend and then you had to forget about it. Maybe talk to someone else while you rubbed the spoon or look around the room. Change your attention. That's when it was likely to bend. If you kept watching the spoon, worrying over it, it was less likely to bend. <laughs>